Hello, I'm JW. This time I'm going to have a look at putting these plugs, which are usually called RJ45s, although they're not actually called that, but uh, the rest of the world calls them that, so deal with it. So putting those on the end of the actual cable it comes with, and that's generally for Ethernet purposes, also known as patch cords and various other things. Now, of course, you can just go to the shop and buy a cable of whatever length you want with one of these plugs on each end, so nothing particularly wrong with that. But of course there are applications where that's not particularly appropriate, one of which is if you're going to be installing a whole pile of this, say, into a building, and then on the end you actually want a plug rather than, say, a wall socket or something else. So in that particular application, of course, it'd be rather tiresome to have to measure out the entire building, have the lead made up, and then somehow install it in the building without breaking the plug off the end and all that. So although it's not a uh, hugely common thing, there are certainly situations where it's needed, one of which is if installing, for example, uh, security cameras, and uh, they just only have a socket on the end that just goes onto the plug there. So uh, let's have a look at the tools needed and how it's actually done. Now this is the plug we're talking about. It's the uh, usual one that probably everybody has seen. It's got uh, eight contacts there, and there's actually eight positions for contacts, which is why this is really called an uh, eight position, eight contact plug, or 8C8P. But everybody calls it an RJ45, even though that's not technically correct. And it's the one that you would connect to your computer in most cases, and obviously to connect a network or the internet or whatever else. So very common connector. And so they're also used on, uh, say, CCTV cameras of decent quality, and also uh, telephones where they're obviously the voice or the internet protocol type, and a whole pile of other stuff as well. So a very common connector. So that's sort of the plug in its uh, raw, unused state. Now here's some cable here, and this is uh, category 5E. There's also a category 6, which is surprisingly similar, but has some uh, structural differences. This also says LAN cable and uh, UTP, which is unshielded twisted pair. There's also an FTP, which is a foiled twisted pair as well. And uh, solid, because it's solid core. It's got four pairs inside, and there's the sizes. And this is the meter mark, which means we're 54 meters into this particular roll. But uh, anyway, fairly commonly available stuff. And uh, have a look inside the uh, cable here, just strip some off of the end here. And we can see inside it's got the uh, twisted pairs there, so there's four of them identified by different colours. also has this uh, cord inside which is used to strip it further, so if you actually pull on this you can uh, strip down the side there, but it's not going to be used in this particular application. And the reason for the twists is so that uh, if you look at them carefully, see each colour has a different amount of twisting to it. And then the deal is that the signal, say on a particular pair, then won't interfere with the uh, other ones because they're twisted slightly differently. And the fact it's twisted keeps them uh, obviously in a single pair there rather than the uh, signal being migrated across the others. So uh, twisting and the order of them is important. Now in terms of buying these things, uh, the plugs are very cheap. They're actually only a few pennies each. And so these are just the bare plugs. You can also get the sort of rubber or plastic sort of boot things that go over the back as well, should you so desire. And I so say that's the uh, details for those ones, but uh, so they're fairly generic items. Here's the cable we've got here. Again, there's no uh, particular surprise there. This is a 100 meter roll. You can also buy it in boxes of various sizes, typically up to uh, about 300 meters, depending on what you actually want. But uh, the main thing, if you're going to buy this cable, Obviously to make sure it's the correct specification, which these days is the minimum of the CAT uh, 5E. And the uh, very important thing is to make sure that when you're buying it, it is actually solid copper cores and not that useless stuff which is quite often sold under names like CCA or CCS, which is copper clad aluminium and copper clad steel because that's slightly cheaper. But if you use that, the installation will work fine for a while and then it will mysteriously fail because steel and aluminium, of course, corrode aluminium far more so than steel. So uh, do not buy anything that's called CCS or CCA. Absolute junk and uh, really shouldn't even be sold in the first place. So what you want is solid copper cores. Yes, it costs slightly more, but uh, it of course means you don't have to go back three or six months later and then replace the entire installation because somebody used poor quality aluminium or steel in there. So uh, that's all there is for that one. Now in terms of actually installing the tools, there is a tool of course required and here's an example. This is just one I happen to have, others are available. And this has various functions built in. It's got a uh, cutter here and also a thing where you can uh, sort of strip out the outside of the coating there. And most importantly is this hole at the top where the plugs actually go in. And that's of course where the uh, 
actual thing is crimped down. So these ones, it just actually snaps in there. And then when you crunch it down, it uh, secures the cable. Again, we'll look at that later on. Now this is pretty much the only tool you actually need for these. So it's basically the tool, appropriate number of uh, plugs there. And then obviously the cable, which I say normally would be uh, installed in the building first, and then the plugs and things put on afterwards. But as this is just a demonstration, we'll just uh, put a couple on a short piece we have here. Now the basic deal here is to remove the outer covering, arrange the wires inside to the appropriate order in by colour and whatever else, cut them to the correct length, then place this uh, on the actual wires, use this tool here then to uh, crimp them onto the end and it fixes it on permanently. Now in terms of the colour arrangement, what we're going to be using here is the arrangement which is known as T568B, and that's probably the most common one. And in pretty much every single case, the arrangement of the wires on the end of the cable is always going to be the same. So we've got so the two ends of the cable, they are going to be both wired up in exactly the same way. Now uh, there was, and in fact still is, a way you can put uh, a different one on each end, and that would actually be the T568B on one end, T568A on the other. And essentially what that means is that two of the colours are swapped around. That makes what's called a crossover cable. Now, uh, those used to be of some kind of value, however these days they're completely irrelevant because the vast majority of equipment doesn't actually need them anymore. What they were used for is if you were going to, say, connect two computers together, rather than, say, a computer to a router, which uh, did require the uh, crossover cable. However, these days pretty much all equipment like that doesn't need it because if you plug two computers together, the actual network cards inside are smart enough to determine that that's happened, and then one of them will internally swap its connections around anyhow, so crossover cables are pretty much obsolete and have been for a considerable amount of time. So the first thing to do is to remove some of this outer covering so we can get to the wires inside. Now uh, this thing here has a uh, sort of scoring thing where the blade just uh, doesn't cut through but does that there. It also says 12mm around for some reason, but. Uh, whatever, it does appear to do the job. So we'll just place that in there. We don't want a huge amount of length, just really enough to be able to get hold of it. So we'll just give that a bit of a uh, twist around, and then we should find we can then just bend it like that, and that will basically tear through the insulation. And we can just remove the outer piece. And we don't want to cut all the way through, because of course that could damage the conductors inside. Now it's got this cord here, which say so you can pull and then strip more off, but in this case we don't need to do that. So what we'll do is just to uh, trim that away, uh, so that is not required. Now the next thing we want to do is to get these four colours in order. And yes, there are eight wires, we'll be separating those in a minute. In this case we want to have the orange over there. Next colour what we want to have is the green. Then we want blue and then we want brown. And ideally we want to get it as flat as possible here, so we don't want this sort of overlapping and making a big ball of wire there. Once you've got a bit of cable, you can generally feel which is the correct one if uh, sort of crossing over and all that business. So basically just sort of tease those out so it's as flat as possible here. That'll make it easier later on. So orange, green, blue and brown. And then the next thing we want to do is to start untwisting these, starting with orange. So we'll just start undoing that. And say so these are twisted differently in each colour. So we want to untwist those, and then we want to actually straighten these out as much as possible, as we don't want them to be uh, curled when they go into the plug. So just sort of pull on them like that, and that will therefore straighten those out. And then we want to get them in the correct order, so we want to start with the stripe, so it's orange stripe, which is basically white with an orange stripe, and then we have the solid orange next to that. And we want to get these straight and parallel as possible. And we're going to move on to the green here. And again, there's a green solid, and there's also a white with a green stripe. And the way this goes is it's always stripe solid, stripe solid all the way through. So the next one we want is, of course, going to be the stripe. Just straighten the green also. So we have that green stripe coming over to that one. Now the next one is not the green solid, so we'll just shove that out of the way for a moment, and then we'll move straight on to the blue. And again, we'll just undrag, twist this. And again, we'll straighten those out as much as we can. And again, because we've got a stripe there, that was the green one, we're going to have the blue solid going right up against next to that one. And then the blue stripe. 
is the next one. And then the green, which we uh, shoved out of the way earlier, that is what then goes next to the blue stripe there. And try and keep those as flat as possible. And then, of course, brown is what's left over. So again, we'll just unravel the browns. And again, because we've got solid green there, then the next one is the stripe. So again, it always goes in that order. And again, we'll straighten those as much as we can. And again, just check here to see that you're not kind of creating a big sort of bundle of uh, bits of things crossing over. Or do you want it as flat as possible? Now the idea here is to get them all flat. So if you from the side, they're completely flat, and then it's obviously nice and parallel on the face. And this is important because otherwise it'd be very difficult to get them into the plug. So uh, just sort of tease those along as much as we can until we get them in a reasonable arrangement. And then the thing to do now is to make sure that we've actually got them in the correct order, which uh, just have a closer look in there. So what we've got then is orange stripe, solid orange, green stripe, solid blue, blue stripe, solid green, brown stripe, and then finally solid brown. Now if we're doing the other one, all that would have happened is the uh, colours there would be swapped around. So where we've got orange and orange stripe, it would actually be interchanged with the green and the green stripe. So if you're doing that T568A, same deal except the basic green and orange are swapped over. But so that's not going to be used that often. It's only if you're making one of those seldom used crossover cables. But uh, also we're not doing that today now. The next step we need to do is to cut these to an appropriate length. And then we need to place the plug on the end. Now, when the plug goes on, the pin there at the bottom, that sort of tab, always points down and away. And then these are actually going to shove into the end of the plug here. Now, I need to cut these to a sensible length so that when the plug is placed over the end, grey insulation there, or whatever colour it is, goes under that part. And then you've just got enough of the coloured wires to go under the uh, contacts here. So basically, you just want to hold it here with sort of one finger there, and then we're going to cut that, making sure that then it's all parallel and square. Now this tool has a cutter in it, and it where it says cut, unsurprisingly, and that makes sure that they're all perfectly parallel and cut at the same level. You do not want to go in here and start snipping away with cutters and whatever, because that's going to uh, result in a jagged end. So I'm just going to place the wires through here, and again we want to keep these as flat and parallel as we possibly can, so we're just going to go in there and cut them, and then note that the end there is perfectly square and parallel. And then without removing uh, fingers there, we want to take the plug here, again with the tab going downwards, and uh, we want to then just shove in the wires, and then just ease those into the contacts there. And at the end here, there's some little guides which will uh, enable you to get those into the correct location. And then gripping here, because the ceiling does tend to move over the outside of it, Give that a good shove in there, make sure that's fully in there. And then if we have a look closer there, you can see through the side of the transparent plastic that those coloured wires go all the way to the end, and they're actually underneath the contacts there. And again, if we turn that over to the other side, you're going to see the brown wire going all the way to the end of the plastic. And you can actually see the colours uh, through the top as well. That's a bit uh, blurred there, because obviously the uh, plastic has all got various indentations in it. So uh, that's what you want there, and you want to keep that pressed in there. And note here that the grey insulation goes under this piece here, which is also going to grip by onto that. And we've only got the coloured pieces here. And if you've got colour bits coming out here, you've cut them too long, so you'll need to shorten those before placing them in the plug. Now the next stage is to just crimp them in position, and that uses this hole here at the top. So with the jaws open and still holding the wires in there, we want to just place this plug in the top here, and it's shaped like the actual socket these go into, so question of just shoving that in. And it will snap in, and then holding the cable in so it doesn't obviously fall out, and then we'll just turn to squeeze the handles. And then we can remove the plug, and then that is complete. And this is actually on a ratchet, so if you only screw it halfway, it doesn't actually open, so you need to squeeze it fully. And then it will, of course, release when the correct pressure is applied. And what's this done is that uh, the metal contacts here have now been pressed down 
and have actually pierced through the insulation to make contact with that. And there's also a piece here which presses down and that secures the outer covering of that so of course it doesn't now pull out of the connector. Now the final thing here is to check that the uh, thing has actually uh, been a wired up correctly and we've also got continuity with those as well. Now you can buy these things very cheaply from the usual suspects and uh, these jobs basically put one on each end so that's the one we just did there so we'll just shove it into the uh, socket there. And then of course the other end of the cable here is one I uh, prepared earlier and again that shoves in the top here. Now of course this is only a very basic check and uh, if you want to actually uh, get the expensive equipment there are other things which cost vast sums of money and will actually send all kinds of high frequency signals down the cable and give you a detailed analysis of all kinds of stuff but just putting the plugs on the end this is just a useful check to confirm you've got the correct wiring on both ends because clearly if the wiring is wrong it's simply not going to work ever and the deal is that we can now turn this on so there we go and what we should see is the actual thing here flashing and as it does so this should then count down we found the numbers here and they should always be in the right sequence so it should be one two three four five six seven eight and then basically repeat on that end there now of course here this is just a short piece of demonstration but of course in a building this would be in say one room and this would be on a different floor or like 50 meters away or whatever so uh, put those on the each end there and uh, this also confirms that you've actually got the correct cable because of course in a building there's more than likely going to be a whole pile of these so uh, by putting this on each end and confirming this then you can also then label the ends of the cable obviously with the appropriate identification so then you know which is what because uh, nothing worse than getting a, I'd say a cabinet or something and let's say 100 of these in there and no one bothered to put labelling on any of them so as you see it's going there just uh, confirming around that one so that's fine and I say in a uh, say a large installation you would probably want to get one of those uh, cabling analyzers and uh, make sure that the cabling is all put in correctly. Certainly if you're going to be installing this what you don't want to be doing is saying kinking the cable and bending it excessively because that can cause damage and although it may show fine on that it may not show fine when you actually come to using it for real data. So uh, that's how you put the uh, plugs on the end of these things and uh, the other point there is if you want to have one of those sort of boot things that goes over the top you do of course have to put on the cable before crimping the plug on and if you forgot to do that and you desperately needed it, the only way to then is just cut this off and then uh, put a new plug on because you can't take those off and reuse them. They are one-time use only. So uh, that's how you put those plugs on there. I'm going to say quite useful in buildings where you're going to say put a lot of this cabling in and you need the actual plug on both ends. And until next time, thanks for watching.